I do believe that this country was founded on certain principles, and I believe we believe in the Second Amendment. We are proposing um, armed self-defense or armed position as it relates to uh, the situation with black people here in America uh, dealing with uh, police departments. One of the great untold stories about the Civil Rights Movement was that it, it required violent resistance from blacks to be effective. Black power. The Huey P. Newton Gun Club gained national attention in the wake of the Michael Brown shooting and the subsequent Ferguson riots. But club president Charles Goodson says that he and a small group of activists actually founded the club in the summer of 2014, after learning that Dallas police have shot at 40 unarmed suspects, according to their own records. We attended a meeting of the Gun Club, which takes its name from Black Panther Party co-founder Huey P. Newton. Black Panther. And we talked with historian Thaddeus Russell about the long, intertwined history of the gun rights and civil rights movements. The fact that we use the gun is just a, a political tool. As much as it, it, it's a provocative thing, I think in, in these days and age, when you have uh, black men and black women, et cetera, and 12-year-old child that's being shot down. I think we're living in profane times. The gun is a tool. It's a tool for the oppressed masses to rise up and throw off the tyranny. Self-defense is a human right. You, you have your rights, your Second Amendment rights. If we are citizens in this country, then that applies to African Americans as well. Black Americans have been using guns ever since there were black Americans. During slavery, there were some armed revolts in which slaves uh, stole guns or simply used ones that were given to them. It really began as a movement after slavery, after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, when the ex-slaves were left to fend for themselves in the South and against a rising hostile opposition to them by organizations like the Ku Klux Klan who were formed during that period, largely um, as a, an attempt to suppress the slaves and stop them from gaining political rights and civil rights and their freedom. The Klan at the time was really the first a gun control organization in American history. That was one of their primary missions, was to disarm the ex-slaves. Instead of being lynched um, in Alabama or being lynched in Mississippi somewhere, we're being lynched now in St. Louis. We're being lynched on live stream video with Eric Gardner. We're being lynched on camera with Oscar Grant. And so we call ourselves Huey P. Newton's because of the, the, the platform that they took in the, as it relates to the police. There's no question that Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, and the Black Panther Party launched the modern gun rights movement. Uh, we give credit to the NRA usually, but that's not the case. In California in, in the 1960s, it was essentially an open carry state uh, at that time, very loose gun laws, and the Black Panthers took advantage of that. At one point, they marched on the state capitol with guns. Black men with rifles marched into the state capitol building in Sacramento. In response to that, bill was passed. Uh, which became the California's first gun control law, which in, in eventually became the model for a national gun control law. So the Panthers really were the first gun rights movement, um, and the response to them, which was, by the way, a Republican uh, response, uh, authored by a Republican congressman and Ronald Reagan, who was governor at the time, was the first gun control anti-movement. When they brought all the military hardware back from Afghanistan and Iraq, who the hell do you think they bring that back? At the end of the day, we already know that the war on terror is the war on us. The war on drugs is the war on us. The first line of government is, is your local government. But the police is going to be the first person you're going to come in contact with that's, that, that represents the, uh, the, the state. Whether I'm protecting myself from a robber, a rapist, or anyone that's trying to brutalize and murder me. We don't differentiate when we say self-defense. One of the great untold stories about the civil rights movement was that it, it required violent resistance from blacks to be effective. The dogs and the fire hoses were not used primarily against the, the peaceful school children who were marching. Thousands of people showed up to watch this nonviolent protest, people who were not organized by King or the SCLC. And those people, many of them, threw br bricks and rocks uh, and bottles at the cops who were there. Um, there were shots fired. Several of Bull Connor's police officers were wounded. Um, this is all before he uses the hoses and the dogs, and in fact, he used the dogs and the hoses against those people. Now, if that hadn't happened, right, King would have had very little leverage um, to go to the, the city elders with, um, but that's what he did. In his letter from Birmingham jail, he said 
to the white leadership of Birmingham, he said, you have a choice. You can deal with those people in the streets um, and, and have a, an ocean of blood at your hands, or you can deal with people like me, you know, good, peaceful, Christian, relatively law-abiding citizens. I'm not promoting violent resistance, but there's no question that it has been effective historically. No Huey P. Newton Gun Club member will accept grants or money from the government. We don't want it. We don't want nothing from it. Anything a person give you, they expect something back. One of the things about accepting government grants is that we feel that we should do for ourselves. But one of the main reasons why we say that is because we feel that as long as we control it, then no one else can control it. You can't buy us. Believe it or not, we found uh, supporters from all over the political spectrum, uh, from the left, from the, from the liberal types uh, to the more conservative types. And so uh, we've gotten a lot of response from conservative uh, people and, you know, National Rifles Association, think groups like that. We don't consider ourselves to the far right or to the far left. We think we're, what we're doing is right on time. You know, right now we're seeing in this country, we're seeing a very interesting moment when um, categories of right and left are being blurred and you see sort of people on the far left joining forces with people sort of on the libertarian right. Modern liberals are mostly interested in social order, and social control, and responsibility. They're not of the left in that sense, right? They're not a revolutionary force, they're a managerial force, and I think that's why they have been so eager to portray gun rights as a right-wing, disruptive, racist uh, cause, right, which is just simply not the case. What we want to leave uh, with our people and with the United States of America and citizens alike is that uh, we desire to be free, um, we desire to be able to practice self-determination, and we will continue to do so as so long as we're, um, so long as we can you know, move forward.